Yeah, man. Rumble in the Bronx. Jackie Chan. Hell yeah. No fear, no stunt, man. No equal. What's good, YouTube? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Greetings. However, whenever you're watching this, we appreciate you because you already know time is expensive. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for subscribing. But if you're here for the first time, this show is about anything and everything creative. creative. Anything that sparks your creativity, whatever medium you dabble in. Yes, expressing your creative soul. And welcome to another episode of Creativity Unsheathed. I'm a lover seeker. And I'm Nino. And yes, we're brothers. Yes, we are. And this is the show where we feel that everyone should know some form of self-defense. No matter what style of martial arts, or if you just have your keys in between your fingers and you just swing away, hey, just know your stuff. Yes, it's dangerous. You know, you always got to be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, always mind your surroundings. Probably like what's number one rule of just life in general. Yeah. If you don't really study hard on martial arts. But, yeah. You yeah. Know. So many people are just stuck on their phones. They don't realize what's going on around them. Yeah. And it's like you don't want to be like uh, Smokey the Bear and like, <clears throat> tell everyone, hey, you pay attention, you pay attention. And it's like, you know, but you you're the one that's not paying attention. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like probably you just got to let people, you know, learn on, learn on their yeah, own. Yeah. Basically. I guess. Yeah. Common sense. Yeah. And while we're talking about this and what we're looking in today is Rumble in the Bronx. Rumble in the Bronx on our segment of Old to Us, New to You movie review. Yes, yes. You know, we'd like to change it up, not always look into comics because, you know, it's creativity and sheath. Any medium you dabble in. Yeah. And, you know, if you're into screenwriting, uh, filmmaking, or uh, fight choreography. Fight choreography. You know, it's like martial arts is part of creativity, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, just expressing your body through whatever martial art form. Yeah. Yep. Right? And Jackie Chan, hey, he's one of those martial artists that does it well. Yes, yes. For a man yes. who does all of his own choreography. His own stunts oh, at that. This is the first movie that I got introduced to Jackie Chan. I mean, he's known for, like, you know, Drunken Master. Super uh, Cop. Yeah, The Police Stories. Yeah, yeah. He got his big break on the American film industry through uh, The Big Brawl and um, uh, The Cannonball. Mm. Can uh, Cannonball Run. And he got his first taste of, like, what American cinema is. But he ended up going back to Hong Kong and, you know, he, like, started to make a name for himself there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Almost like what Bruce Lee did. Yeah, you for know? sure. You know for how sure. Bruce Lee had Green Hornet. Uh, Long Street and the one where really he broke uh, the, the table and the shelf and the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like the, the whole uh, office, right? Yeah, the yeah. Office the office scene. Oh, Marlowe. Oh. There, there you go. Marlowe was the one where he was tearing up the office. Right, right, and then what Bruce Lee went to back to Hong Kong, and mm -hmm. then he did, you know, had had his success in films. Yeah, similar to what you know Jackie Chan did. You know, he had his own uh, successful films there, and just you know build his name up. And it was like it was pretty cool, like a notable mention that Jackie Chan was in uh, Bruce Lee's movies. You know, like yes. uh, Fist of Fury. Fist of Fury was also titled Chinese Connection. And then Into the Dragon. Oh, of course. We're yeah, <laughs> we got choked out and killed. Man. Man. So, you know, thanks to Samo Hung, who really helped out with mm -hmm. his career. And I think what the bigger connection between the legacy of Bruce Lee is that Jackie Chan hooked up with Golden Harvest. Yes, right? yes. With Raymond Chow, which how he got on Cannibal Run in the first place. And then Golden Harvest being, you know, the production behind Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. And not necessarily writing a coattail of Bruce Lee, but you kind of just see like the, the the reference of the the career and legacy of what Bruce Lee set. Yeah, you know, so sure. if it wasn't for Bruce, Golden Harvest wouldn't be in the mix. You yeah, know, American yeah. film, you know, like just the whole inner Enter the Dragon project. Yeah. yeah. And then on, on top of uh, the Ninja Turtle movie, right? oh, yeah, yeah. Like on that film alone, yeah. it's like they were able to make a name for themselves as a production company, not yeah. just in Hong Kong, but in America. In LA, yeah. What I liked about this movie is uh, the way he displayed his martial arts, like in a, in a real world environment. Totally. You know, not so much against like 
other like government operatives or like big elite fighters. Yep. It was more like street level, run of the mill type things that people encounter on the streets. Oh yeah, totally. And it, it, it kind of teaches you how to like defend yourself. Right, it's like what he demonstrated here is what Bruce Lee exhibits in all of his demonstration as far as use whatever's around you, mm -hmm. you know, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, but you know, just your, your environment is your friend, you know, adapt to whatever, yeah. you know, and growing up, growing up and being in street fights himself, mm -hmm. it's like Jackie Chan demonstrated just that, like what Bruce Lee is trying to instill in everybody's mind, because you're talking about the concept of someone that can take your life, yeah, or, yeah. Or, and vice versa. But yeah. it's just being in that situation, you still know when, but you, know, it's, you gotta be prepared. Yeah, you know? and you gotta do what you gotta do with, with what you can, mm -hmm. you know, well, it's, it's your life you're talking about, totally. you know what I mean? Like leading up to that alley where the broken glass scene, yeah. you know, it's like, I, I cringe, honestly, like, every time I, I see that. But yeah, for sure. You need a lot of cardio. You know, just seeing the scene, these yeah. fight scenes, and just how he was just running away from the biker gang. Like, yeah. You just got to stay in shape. Yeah, for sure. It's like, you, yeah, you eat whatever you want, but you still got to work out, mm -hmm. you know? For sure. The movie is really kind of like a way of the dragon. Totally, man. Cause just because in the opening scene, but knowing, okay, uh, this is the American version, and New Line Cinema had to rewrite or redo like a couple scenes in, for this version. So that scene change was that opening scene. So instead of the Hong Kong background, it, they changed it to the New York scene. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So him driving in from the airport was the additional reshoot. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's and then cool. Bruce Lee coming into a big city, Rome. Rome, right? yeah. In Way the Dragon. Helping out the restaurant. Right. And then he had the back alley scene. Yeah. The fight scene. Uh -huh. Right. So totally similar. But, you know, just with Jackie Chan, I feel like he just has to go bigger. Yeah. You know, like him getting a taste of what American cinema is as far as stunts. Yeah. Right. And then going back to Hong Kong, I've, I'm pretty sure he had the idea of like, okay, how can I incorporate stunt coordination into Hong Kong, but it's still mine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then having that Charlie Chaplin comedy. Mr. Keaton, yes. Right? And to his, not gimmick, but like to his fighting scenes. Yeah. It's, like, it's really engaging. Compared to um, action cinema, there's a lot of cuts. Yeah, yeah. Right? For sure. Like really choppy cuts and like it doesn't make the uh, fight scene fluid. Mm -hmm. But with Jackie Chan and his movies, or with anything in Hong Kong cinema, they let it run. Yeah. Right? Like they just let the actors do their thing. Yeah. No cuts, unless it's really meant, like, it's meant for the scene, mm -hmm. for the fight mm -hmm. scene. And you could say it's almost like silent acting when he does these scenes. It's like he's trying to really show the uh, the beauty behind the martial arts. Yep, yep. Showing what the body can do by yeah. you know, just expressing whatever environment you're mm -hmm. in, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, how you're going to get out of a certain situation and just survival, mm -hmm. you know? And adding that comedy and it's like, oh shit, like you're really rooting for Jackie. Yeah, it's like when it's scenes, it's like it puts a movie in another, in a movie. Totally. So much, so much action, so much cardio. Yep. yep. Like you got to give it up to Jackie. And you know, yeah, Steven Seagal and uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yes, yes. But like, they weren't really Bruce Lee, you know, yeah. they, they didn't have that it factor, you know, yeah. Yeah, for a certain audience, for certain movies, mm -hmm. but then when Jackie Chan came out to the scene, and it was just a new fresh breath air as yeah. far as martial arts. Yeah, and to add to that, it's like, a big Bruce Lee fan over here, but but when I seen Jackie, I was like, oh, it's not Bruce, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I really, I really gravitate to this movie, because it was my first exposure. Right. How he moved, it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. How he fought, it didn't look gimmicky. It looked possible. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Realistic. Right. No, no wires. Mm -hmm. But it's like, ooh, it was, it was exciting to watch. You know, fight like Jackie. Yeah. You know. And it didn't look like Bruce at all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, exactly. You already, you already knew it was just Jackie all the way. Yeah. You know? I would rather take Jackie over Steven or like any other Bruce Lee wanted. Mm -hmm. He's trying to ride on the Bruce Lee coat too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would rather watch. Jackie all the time. Yeah, I agree. Like, each film that he's done, it, yeah, it may have, like, a similar plot, but it's how he's gonna do the choreography. Yeah. You know, it's like, each scene's gonna be different, and, you know, you're you're definitely gonna be in for a show. Yeah. You know? Knowing that he was in theater. Oh, yeah, right? like, yeah. And he just knows how to wow the crowd. Yeah. You know? It's like, yeah, like you are saying, like, the fight scenes kind of look like an 
a Broadway show and a movie. Yep, yep. Like getting two movies in one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he could have had bigger roles um, in American cinema, but he was given roles as a villain. Oh. And like he was supposed to be uh, Wesley Snipes' character in that movie, Demolition Man with us. No. Yeah, so Jackie Chan turned that down, and then Wesley Snipes ended up taking that role. So. Well, Stallone versus Jackie Chan. That'll be, that'll be interesting. Yeah, you know dude, it reminded me of Jet Li's The One. Ooh. Were you the prisoner? Right. Oh, that but then he showed his martial arts, right? It would have been interesting. I mean, Jet Li did, be, did become a villain in... Uh, uh, Lethal 4? Yeah, um, Lethal Weapon 4. But... And that was like supposedly his very first American movie coming over, crossing over, with no yeah. lines. <laughs> no lines, just fighting. You can definitely see that Jackie Chan had value in his in his acting chops and his martial arts and just him as a human being that you know he can be more than just a villain. Yeah, maybe he didn't want to play that stereotypical role. Oh, yeah, you off know? top, you know. But hey, you know, luckily enough, you know, he he stuck to him. He stuck what he knew, and you know, he surrounded himself with the right team mm -hmm. as far as like hooking up with uh, Golden Harvest and a studio that really backed him up and believed in his vision. Yeah, you know? for sure. Because uh, what, Lo, Lo Wei, who was also like director and producer of mm -hmm. Bruce Lee's movies, yeah. he looked at Jackie Chan as a stand-in Bruce Lee or like the next Bruce Lee. Yeah. You know, he really tried to label Jackie Chan as the, the little dragon or just whatever and really forced him to copy Bruce Lee's style. and um, like, like whole, a serious act. Yeah, yeah. Like, even the whole nose flicking uh, of the nose yeah. and everything is like no Jackie Chan knew like okay no I can't and this is not me this is not my style yeah. like I gotta I gotta leave and yeah. which led him you know going to go in Golden Harvest yeah, yeah. And it's like supposedly he had like low weight try to have ties with him and triads but no, you know, same yeah. thing with Bruce but who knows who yeah knows? yeah who knows comment below if you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. There was like some added scenes in this movie, yeah? Yeah. When New Line Cinema about the rights for the international play after the success in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. it released in the U.S. like about a year later, about February or so. Mm -hmm. The original running time was like about 102 minutes, I believe. But then for the for the for this U.S. version, it got cut down to 90. Oh. Yeah, so there are some scenes that got cut out. Oh, yeah, wow. Um, just because of the um, English dubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the English dub kind of hindered the storytelling. Yeah, like Jackie Chan would fight the, the street gang, but then the, him and the street gang end up being friends and going yeah, yeah. going against the bigger boss. Because know? Yeah, because the bigger boss took a couple of their friends and killed them. I mean, I don't know if that was like an original script, but the additional scenes that were added was when... Jackie and the female uh, character um, Nancy. Nancy. Yeah. And they're fleeing from the the, the nightclub. The, uh, uh, that was supposedly like an added scene. Nice. And then the diamond scene in the streets. Oh yeah, like the, the whole exchange. Yeah, 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 yeah. Supposedly that was added. And I feel like I mean it was, it was like really choppy from that point on into the into the third act. And what if it was like leftovers from the Hong Kong movie that they threw in? You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, from, from another movie of Jackie Chan. It makes sense. I mean... Like, like deleted scenes? Yeah, totally, man. Yeah. I, I can totally oh, understand yeah. that. That's a good one. Like, they could just put deleted scenes from another movie and just trying to make it flow. Mm. Yeah. Hey, if they can do that for Three Ninjas, yeah. the first movie, the one that we reviewed was the American version, but supposedly it's an international version where there's like a, like a totally different story. Yeah, yeah. The ending ended differently. Yeah, so... I mean, hey, it kind of just shows like the, the the distribution in Hollywood and yeah, you know yeah. international and all these copyrights get in the mix. Yeah, but how clever they can edit and cut films together, and yeah, it works. Yeah, and you know, for this film, I mean, for a ninety-minute film, yeah, it was still fun, fun, very you know, fun, exciting, it, entertainment, it, yeah, impactful. The story was still there. Um, it totally gave me Bruce Lee's way, the dragon story, like. It had the same vibe yeah. but of course it just has it's it's bigger like more stunts more everything and it's like totally different from a Bruce Lee film but the the foundation of going to a big city helping out your relative and getting into a clash with the street gang yeah. you know it's kind of it seems pretty common but you know Bruce Lee seems the one who started it all yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah for sure but not a lot of uh action but brought those stories to the big screen yeah yep yep 
and that that uh, the two-way mirror scene in the supermarket that was I believe that may have been added as well right? because I think the original cut of the film um, the lady who bought the market she bought it at the wedding of, yeah. of Jackie Chan's uncle, uncle yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you know maybe for story's sake you know it still it still made sense mm -hmm. you know yeah. um, just switching it flipping it a little comedy yeah you know it totally makes sense and you know, maybe like the whole the, the Hong Kong version had uh, a lot more characterization mm -hmm. as far as Jackie Chan as a as a police officer and then uh -huh. uh, having a girlfriend mm -hmm. it's like you, there were, she was probably in the scenes in the wedding uh -huh. and probably had to cut that out or reshoot certain things yeah so it kind of shows the creativity and the, the cleverness of editing tricks yeah small reshoots Movie magic, if you will. Oh. Yeah. Makes me want to look at the original Hong Kong version. Now yeah. And um, just kind of appreciate that that version for what it is. Yeah. See how that that story flowed. Yeah. And it's if it was a different ending as well. True. Right. Because you know the ending of this is just <clears throat> really didn't make sense. Yeah. And it had a comical ending too. It's like a fucking Looney Tunes. It felt rushed. Yeah. And, like he got run over, and then all he's doing his butt. You know, like yeah. like a straight Looney Tunes cartoon, like what the hell? Totally. And all in all, I mean, I, I still enjoyed it. Um, you know, uh, it's still Bruce Lee number one for me on that list of me martial too. artists as well. Um, yes. But I think Jackie Chan is just, just there for that entertainment purpose. Yeah, for um, sure. Not so much like I want to imitate his style or yeah. like I want to learn from him. Yeah, it's like. I, it's like, I don't know, maybe it's stupid, but like you watch Jackie Chan, you're entertained when you come out the movie theater, right? Yes. You go and watch a Bruce Lee movie, come out there, you want to fight somebody. <laughs> or like, you're like you have so much confidence in yourself that, you know, it's like they project certain energy mm, it's like you, to you. It's like you get motivated differently with, 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 uh, with Bruce Lee. It's yeah. Like you feel empowered. Yes. With Bruce, you feel empowered when you come out watching the, watching yeah. his movies. Yeah. But yeah, with Jackie Chan, you're entertained. Yeah, you know, it's like, exactly. Like, Happy, <laughs> you know. Like, it's like, it's yeah. like, like you know what to expect from a Jackie Chan movie. Yeah. But it's like with Bruce Lee, you kind of you don't know yet. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> totally. Because during the time of his films, it was like it's still up in the air as far as the style he wanted to bring to a, a Hong Kong cinema. Yeah. You know, because when you see Bruce Lee fights and then just the energy, he, he his face is like really like intense. Mm, yes. Jackie Chan looks just fucking tired all the time, just like running, trying to focus so much. Mm, That's yeah. a lot of focus. Yeah, dude. And for him to be tired at the end of that scene, yeah, it's yeah. like, whoo, like I'm holding my breath watching the scene. All right. And I think what's really <clears throat> cool about this though is like, or out of all of his movies. You show the bloopers. Yes, I love that. I love that. Behind the scenes of every movie. Yes, like, it just shows the, the hard work that goes into yeah. it. You know, not just for the sake of entertainment. Mm. You know, mm. there's there's bumps, bruises, injuries. Because he did break his ankle. Yes, he did. Jump, jumping onto the boat. Yeah, or the hovercraft. Hovercraft, whatever. yeah. Whatever. Yeah, but, you know, it just shows, like, you know, what an, uh, an action star has to endure. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like... Maybe that was the only time he had to have a stunt double. Yeah. But for the most part, he's the only action star that doesn't need one. No. <laughs> he's willing to, to put his body through that type of uh, damage or yeah. work, you know? I mean, there is a clip of the uh, of Jackie, like, looking at uh, all of his films and just admiring it. Like, With his daughter, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just... yeah, I loved him. I loved him in uh, Karate Kid. He was great. Oh, dude, yeah. And then what, Rush Hour came after this? It led up to it, yeah. Um, but they re-released after the success of, uh, success of this. I believe either New Line or another studio bought the rights to Police Story Four, which was First Strike. Oh, okay. Um, they re-released it uh, maybe about a year in 1997. Because <laughs> when he's wearing the uh, the seal hat, either it was the seal. Or a dolphin, but yeah, then it's like, and then a koala, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> and just from the the momentum from those movies, like led up to Rush Hour, yeah, you know, and just the Hollywood American success, okay. you know, and just with the trilogies off of Rush Hour. Okay, yeah. you imagine if Bruce Lee was in Rush Hour? Oh man, 
<laughs> or like it was Brandon Lee and, and Chris Tucker. Oh. oh man, Brandon Lee and Chris Tucker. I get to see that already. Oh, man, speaking of Brandon Lee, there was a scene in the fight scene mm -hmm. in the back alley regarding the fence. Because in oh, rapid, yeah, 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 yeah. Because in rapid fire, um, uh, Brandon Lee had to swing himself off of a fence. Yeah, yeah. Know? Jackie Chan had did the same thing, not as fluid or as cool as Brandon Lee, but knowing that Rapid Fire came out in '92, I wonder if there yeah. was some sort of influence. Yeah. Just because it's a Brandon Lee name. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like you know what it's tied to. Yeah. So it's like you when have, he, yeah, you know. He actually used the gate, and then he actually kicked the guy. Right. Mm -hmm. And then for for Brandon, he just used it as as a parkour e evasion. Yeah, move, yeah. You know, yeah. to gain distance and stuff. Yeah. Oh, um, Jackie also demonstrated his uh, Wing Chun dummy uh, moves. Oh yeah. In his grand his uncle's apartment. Yeah, man. I it think that pretty was pretty good. Yeah, I think was, that was definitely cool. And then, like in the fighting scenes in the warehouse against the thugs, he really like demonstrated a lot of. Seems like he demonstrated like a lot of uh, arts styles and stuff. Totally. Like like Wing Chun, like Shaolin, and like Big Fist, and using weapons mm. like the Shaolin. Mm. Yeah, like really, he's seen his JKD. You know, yeah, yeah, you exactly. Know, like using things around him. His mixed martial arts, whatever, yeah. if you want, whatever have you, or whatever he's comfortable with. You know, fighting weight, uh, fighting style. Oh, speaking, speaking of rapid fire, mm. remember when Brandon mm. used the refrigerator door? He did. Jackie used the refrigerator door mm. in the warehouse against the thugs. So again, is there some reference there? Oh, that was a good one though. That's like JKD, right? Yeah, he used whatever is around you. Because he was going to guess what, three? Three people at the same time? Jackie? Yep. Yep. As far as the that 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 area refrigeration section. Yeah. So you gotta do whatever you can to get that separation, right? Dude, just or, watching his fights, it's like you're really focused, like really breathtaking. Mm-hmm. It's like you you have to hold your. You breath. really hold your breath. Ooh. It's an over. Oh. Yeah, that's the same feeling I got with watching Ip Man with Donnie Yen, just holding my breath like. Oh, dude. Oh. Like, how's this gonna end? It's like running hoops. <laughs> Pickup game, man. <laughs> Fuck. But for them, it's martial arts fighting. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, all in all, like, it's definitely a fun film. Um, again, this film being my first introduction to Jackie Chan and being a forever fan, but it's not gonna over, over top Bruce Lee. But, you know, it's definitely gonna be an addition to the martial arts collection just because of the scenario, the, yeah. the, the street scenario, you yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, it gives off the impression that you need to be fit and get, your cardio has to be up, you yeah. know? It's like, you don't always have to fight, but he just shows that you just, you have to run if you need to. Yeah, no, right. seriously, that's real. That's real talk. All right, it's like, you're, you're talking about survival. Yeah, and talking yeah. about your life. Yeah, it's like, it's not ego, and it's yeah. like, you're not gonna have everybody record this it's, yeah. it's not a ufc fight it's not mm -hmm. a backyard brawl or anything it's yeah. like it's legitimately your life that you're talking about yeah if you're waiting for that then you're, you're dumb <laughs> like no, no need for that no it's like well there's you're not going to get a championship belt you know if you're going to survive or if you get get into a street fight it's like no one's going to applaud you, you yeah know? it's like yeah you might run into troubles in the law just because of like you are a weapon. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. just defending yourself, but sadly enough, yeah, you have to go through that ordeal as well. You right. know? And it's like, is it worth it? Yeah. And, you know, there are certain battles that you don't have to always get into. Yeah, and if you can walk away, walk away. And it's like, so what? People keep talking shit. Let that person, you know, get their karma. It's like, you don't need to, you know, stoop to their level. Yeah. You know, it's like, 
every martial artist demonstrates that like you don't need to be in every fight. Man. Yeah, you don't have to waste your energy. Yep. Yeah, on senseless situations. Yeah. Yeah, be sure to have like some form of self defense or like just be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Know your basics, and sometimes the basics is all you need. Yeah. And it's like the chances of you coming across a professional fighter is yeah. really slim to none. Yeah. So you know. You know, keep that in mind. Yeah. And it's like, not everybody knows how to fight. Yeah. And, you know, you if you know you, and as a martial artist, if you're here because of, cause of this film and you're a martial artist, yeah, you already know you don't have to get into every fight. You can just walk away and just, you know, pick your battles. Yeah, like goes in life, just pick your battles. Overall, I, you know, yeah, I would give it a three, out of three and a half out of five just because of the rushed ending of the film. But um, overall, like, you know, I, I still had fun. I still enjoyed it. it was, I was entertained. I'm a big fan of martial arts, so just mm -hmm. having Jackie Chan's version of expression in martial arts is, you know, it's definitely a cool addition in the collection. Yeah, for sure. But for me, yeah, three and a half. Um, I've rented I've rented this a few times. <laughs> it got me motivated to, you know, learn martial arts. It was part of the 5 for 5 deal? Part of the 5 for 5. Mission video, Geneva mission. Yep, 5 um. for 5. <laughs> Five, five movies, five dollars, five days. That's cool, right? Well, what, 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 what did we get? We get Rumble the Bronx. Rumble the Bronx. Sidekick. Sidekicks. Three ninjas. Three ninjas. Yes, uh, Bruce Lee was available. It was a you we would get it. Yeah. Uh, GI Rap Joe. Rapid Fire. Grand yeah, these Rapid Fire. Ninjas. Only the only the strong. Mark the Costco. Yeah, that day it's gonna be a future episode right there. Uh, stay tuned. Stay <laughs> tuned. <laughs> I mean, shout out to the whole cast that's, you know, I mean, cool to work with, look like they had fun, look like everyone had their back, and, you know, just watching the behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, everyone chipped in and made the movie happen. And made Jackie Chan look good. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, like yeah. you know, the, the villains or the stunt the stuntmen, like, yeah. they really make the action hero look like the hero. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, sure. as far as taking the hits, falling like, down, yeah. like, they really have to sell this this fighting sequence, yeah, you know. Yeah. And hats off to them. Yeah, seriously, like uh, the 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 stunt coordinating team, like they're really underrated. Yeah, you know? like yeah. even Jackie Chan was a stunt coordinator himself for other movies, but just the work that goes into making the fight scene look real. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I like the fact that like when Jackie gets hurt. Behind the scenes, everyone rushes and helps, and like everyone for everyone on the on the cast. Yep, yep. Like, like the camaraderie and mm. and just everyone got your back. You yeah, yeah, that's really cool, and it's like it really shows that it, it's a family on set. Yeah, you know? sure. That's why the the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, man. Rumble in the Bronx. Jackie Chan. Hell yeah! No fear, no stunt man, no equal. Get it? He is not garbage. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to end this episode with a motivational quote for y'all because that's what we do on Creativity and Chief. And, you know, let the value hit you for what it's worth. But, I mean, if you heard it before, just let it be a reminder of where we are today. And then this one is by Jonathan Cazal. And it states, Pick battles big enough to matter and small enough to win. End quote. Oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. Totally goes with Rumble the Bronx and wanting to save the the damsel in distress, yeah. but it was a fake scene. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was a, a planned uh, ambush. Yeah, but he didn't know. You sure, know? straight was, up tourists. Yeah, yeah. So him seeing someone in trouble and the human nature of helping others, but he just didn't know that it was going to be an ambush just because of the uh, the grocery scene. You know, yeah, where yeah. he stopped the thugs from stealing. Yeah. You know, yeah. just that whole fight scene. And that's their that was their payback. Man. But, but it's like they wait for him to come out of work, mm -hmm. which they did, and then yeah. went into the alley and then getting got bottles thrown at him and the cringe scene. Yeah. So and he had to get this cardio work in. But yeah. you know, again, like know yourself if you can win. And you don't always have to go into every battle. Yeah. I mean, it's like you don't have to walk through something to always prove something. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you can walk on the other side, go ahead. Who's going to judge you? Right. If someone's watching that 
you know, what, they're going to make fun of you? Yeah. yeah. That, that's karma on them. That's your gut telling you you need to walk on the other side of the street, you know what I mean? It's like, like common sense. Common sense, instinct, gut instinct, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, your third eye, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's, that's just God or the universe telling you. Guiding you. You know. Make like, the right decision. Exactly. But, you know, that's... For martial arts, that's the yin yang of the all, you know, yeah. like the universal flow. But, you know, sometimes you're going to be in a negative light and a positive light. Yeah. But if you know yourself to stay true, the situation will end up in your favor because the universal knows. Yeah, you know? it'll be on your side, you know. And because yeah. you were guided there for from the beginning. And, you know, the universe or God or whatever have you already knows your plan, already knows yeah. your choices. Yeah. For sure. You know, it's all part of it. And yeah, you just got to be in tune and, you know, just listen to yourself. Listen to your uh, your intuitions. Yeah. And some people might look at you as crazy or, you know, just because you talk to yourself long enough, what, you're going to believe it? But how else are you going to find these answers? Yeah. You know? It's yeah. like... That's why I say sometimes you got to look within yourself. Yeah. Look in within yourself. That's, listen to the silence. Right. Meditation. Meditation yeah. is key. And some people find it as a joke, but, you know, again, that's their journey. Yes. That's, that's their karma. Yeah. And, you know, let the people find out on their own. Yeah. At their, at their own time and pace, if they will. You know, yeah. And for for a reason why we're doing it now, why we, why we do this on our show, free value. You know, yeah. free value that will benefit you in a way. However, you want to take these messages, and yeah, we some of us been there. Yeah, some of us been through those situations. And you know, there's some relatability somewhere. Yeah, for and sure. Yeah, if not you, you know someone. It's just the human connection that we uh, that we all have, and you know, we're just trying to stay connected in some way. Yeah. You know, through this digital age, yeah. and it's the that human experience. Yeah. And just trying to weed out the negativity. Yeah, <laughs> man. So, yeah, y'all. I guess that is that time where we say stay creative. Keep creating. Stay independent. Have your own voice. Tell your own awesome stories. Find ways to stay motivated as a human being and keep on going. Yeah, man. Spread the love. Kill the negativity, y'all. Right? Stay in shape. Keep working out. Practice your martial arts. Yeah, let's do some reps. All right. Till next time. Till next time. Peace. Peace. You know, he's right. <laughs> he's right, you know. Sometimes you guys just go too far.